Hey guys, welcome back to the Prometheus series. So far we have learned what Prometheus is, how it works and how to set it up. And also we explored how to scrape metrics exposed by our application both with static config and also service discovery. However, there are times when we need custom metrics for our application. In our example, for our to-do application. Like the number of to-do items created in the last two days or the number of pending items at the moment. How do we get such metrics? That's our topic today. In this chapter, we will see the different types of metrics supported by Prometheus and how to generate custom metrics programmatically. So without any further delay, let's get started. CPU usage, memory consumption, number of requests received, etc. are common metrics for any application and we get those metrics out of the box by adding some dependencies like we added the actuated dependency to our to-do application in the previous videos. However, some metrics are specific to the business. Like in our case, for our to-do application, the number of to-do items created or the number of pending to-do items. As these metrics are specific to an application, these are generally referred to as custom metrics or domain metrics. These metrics greatly help us to understand our application's performance and behavior. For example, with these custom metrics, we can check how many to-do items are getting created daily or how frequently users are completing their to-do items. So to generate these custom metrics, Prometheus supports four types of metrics, counter, gauge, histogram and summary. Let us see what each type is in detail with examples starting with counter. When we need to count the number of occurrences of a particular event like the number of requests received or the number of to-do items created, the counter type metric is used. A counter value can only increase or be reset to zero on application restart. So whenever we need a metric to be recorded and we are sure it always goes up, then we should use counter type. The next type of metric is gauge. A gauge is a metric that represents a single value that can increase or decrease over time. Examples of gauges include the memory usage of an application or the number of pending to-do items. So whenever we need a metric to be recorded and it may go up or down, then we should use gauge type. Next is histogram. Sometimes we want to check the performance of an application in different scenarios. For example, if these are my requests with their corresponding response times, I may want to check how many requests took 5 to 10 seconds to respond which is unusual. For these kind of scenarios we should use histogram. Let's see how it's calculated. Let's say we have these 10 requests with their corresponding response times. Now we can define ranges or buckets based on our needs. Now based on these values the bucket count increases. For example request 1 took 0.23 seconds that is less than or equal to 1. So this fits in all the buckets like less than or equal to 2, less than or equal to 3 etc. And if you see the last bucket that is less than or equal to infinity meaning it counts all the values from the 30 to infinity. So now the count increases for all the buckets as it fits in the all buckets. Now let us see another example. Request 2 took 3.01 seconds which fits in the bucket less than or equal to 4 and further. So now the count of the buckets from less than or equal to 4 increases. If we fit all these requests in these buckets, the count value looks something like this. That means 6 requests took less than or equal to 5 seconds and 9 requests took less than or equal to 20 seconds. So whenever we need a metric to be recorded in buckets, then we should use histogram. And the last type of metric is summary. A summary is similar to a histogram, but instead of measuring the distribution of values over time, it measures the quantiles of the values over time. For example, these are my requests and their response times. Let's say I want to calculate the average response time for these 10 requests. If we calculate the average response time with our mathematics, it looks something like this. That means these 10 requests took on an average 6 seconds time to respond. But if you see the response times, almost 9 requests took less than 0.5 seconds. So just because of this single request, we are analyzing the performance of our application in a wrong way. So to ignore these outliers, we use percentiles. So this percentile is calculated by sorting all the response times in an ascending order and we take the two middle values and average them. So here 50th percentile is 0.33. That means 
around 50% of request took less than 0.33 seconds. Summary metric type also gives the 90th percentile and 99th percentile. We will see how to calculate these percentiles in the next chapter of this series. Stay tuned. I think I have loaded enough theory on custom metrics. Now it's time for the hands on. So this is our to do application which is written in Spring Boot. Now let us see how to generate these four types of metrics using Prometheus client libraries. So in the previous chapters we already used the micrometer dependency. So let's use the same. So first let us define the counter metric. Private counter. Let's import this from the micrometer library and let's give it some name to do counter. Now let's declare the meter registry which is used to generate this custom metrics. Now let's initialize it public to do service meter registry and this dot meter registry is equal to meter registry. So now we initialize the meter registry. Now we should initialize the counter type this dot to do counter is equal to we can initialize this counter in a different ways. Let me choose the easiest one counter dot build and we should give the name for this metric. Did you remember for each matrix we will have a name and also the labels. So let's give something like to do dot created counter as we are trying to get the number of to do items created with this counter type. And if you want to give any labels to this metric, we can give with tags status as created. So now this label gets attached to this metric. And also we can give the description so that others can understand what exactly this metric is doing. So total number of to do items created. And finally, we should register this one with the meter registry. That's it. Now the counter type is initialized. Now, whenever the to do item is created, we should increment this. For that, let's go to the create to do item. So, here, after saving it to the database, let's increment it. That's it. Whenever a to do item is created, this counter gets incremented. Now, let us see how gauge metric works. With gauge metric, let us try to record the number of pending to do items at a given time. For that, let me create a separate method private void record pending items and we can get that with spring jpa so to do repository dot count by completed false so this gets the number of to do items which are not completed let's take this count to a variable long pending items now we should push this value to this gauge metric for that all we need to do is meter registry dot gauge let's give a name Let's give a name to this metric to do dot pending dot count and the value is pending items which we got in the first line. And if we want to give some labels to this matrix, all we need to do is tax tax is equal to tax dot off status as pending and we should give this tax here. Now this status label gets attached to this metric. That's it. Now the gauge metric is ready. Now let's see how histogram and summary metrics works. For that I created a simple API slash slow. What this does is it will take the delay as a request parameter and it waits for the delay and gets completed. If you don't provide any delay as a request parameter it will generate a random number from 0 to 10. So I created this API just to generate some delays in our API. So for this, we can record the response times with histogram and summary metric types. For that, all we need is an annotation, timed annotation and to this timed annotation, we can pass parameters. This is the name value is equal to slow dot request. This is the metric name and description also we can give maybe slow API response time. And if you want to fit all these response times into buckets like we discussed in the histogram type we should enable the histogram true and also if you want to calculate the percentiles that we discussed in the summary type we should define what all percentiles we need so percentiles is equal to 0.5 that is 50th percentile 0.9 that is 90th percentile and 0.99 which is 99th percentile so let's save it that's it now we have all four types of metrics Counter is used to get the number of to-do items created. Gauge is used to get the number of pending to-do items. 
and histogram is used to fit this API response times into the buckets and as a summary matrix we are calculating these percentiles. Now you might be wondering how do I do this for each and every API? Should I write this for every API? No. If you want this to be calculated for every API, all you need to do is go to application properties and define these properties. That's it. With these parameters, we are enabling the histogram for all the HTTP requests and we are asking to calculate these percentiles. Isn't it cool? That's it. Now we should deploy these changes to our minikube. I'm skipping the deployment of this application as we already covered in the Helm video. Please check out the Helm video to know how to deploy this application onto the minikube. We don't need to change anything on the Prometheus side as we have service discovery in place and we have these annotations defined on the service. So automatically these metrics are scraped by the Prometheus server. Please refer to the service discovery chapter of this series to know more about how service discovery works. I am port forwarding our to-do API service which is deployed in Minikube on the port 8082. So let me go to the postman and create two to-do items, one and two. So now we created two to-do items. So the expectation is our to-do counter should have the value of two. Let's go to the browser. If you look at here, this is our to-do metric. This is the name of our metric and this is our type of metric which is counter. And if you remember, this is the description that we gave for our metric. And this is the label that we attach to our metric in our code. And as you can see, this has the value of two because we created two to-do items from our postman. And next metric that we created was gauge. As you can see this is here this is the name of the metric that we gave and this is of the type gauge and we didn't give any description for this metric and this is the label that we attach to this metric programmatically now let's go to postman and complete the first item and let's go back to the browser and now this pending value should become one let's refresh as you can see this value got changed to one and the next metrics we raised was histogram and gaze for that let's go to postman and hit this slow api Let's call this API with the 5 seconds delay. As you can see this took 5 seconds of time to run this API. So now let's go back to browser and refresh our metrics. As you can see this is our histogram metric. This is the name of the metric and this is the type of the metric which is histogram and this is the description that we gave for this metric. Now if you see these are the buckets, LE stands for less than or equal to. So as it took 5 seconds of time, this value is 0 because this doesn't fit into this bucket. Let's scroll down a little and look at this bucket, less than or equal to 10. As you can see the value is 1 because 5 is less than or equal to 10. So like this, all this distribution happens based on these buckets. And the next one was the quantiles that we defined using summary. As you can see these quantiles are here. The 50th percentile is 4.8 and the same with the 95 and 99th percentile. And the next thing that we did was we enabled the histogram for all the APIs. We can verify that here. We have a HTTP server request seconds for the complete API and also for the create API and all the APIs that are there in this application. We can verify these metrics from our Prometheus UI also. Let's go to Prometheus UI and type to do. As we enabled autocomplete, we are getting suggestions automatically. So let's try this. As you can see, we have we created two to-do items. Also, we can see the slow request API count. So as we hit two times, so we got the two value here. So this way, we can raise the custom metrics. That's it for this chapter. Please do some hands-on to get more understanding into these custom metrics. Stay tuned for the next chapter on the PromQL. My name is Pavan Tapu, and I thank you very much for watching this video. If you like the content, please share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any updates.